The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Top Man, starring William Gargan. Dennis Morgan is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Did you ever happen to be jingling some coins in your hand and get to examining the dimes and quarters and pennies? You'll see on every coin these words, In God We Trust. Oh, I guess it's something that everybody knows about, but it makes me realize that every time we exchange a coin, we are offering a silent act of faith in God. It makes me realize that on all our coinage, there is inscribed the same conviction that we in Hollywood want to express through family theater. It's a conviction so many of us share, an understanding that the simple direct appeal of prayer to God can bring hope and happiness and God's wonderful help to us and to our families. And we need trust in God and faith in one another if we are to have a peaceful world, a prosperous nation, and happy homes. You know, a world of happy homes would go a long way to a peaceful world. And here's a thought for a happy home. Pray together as a family, yes, Pray together tonight and every night, because family prayer will help keep your family together and happy. And you'll find this true for every race and creed, for every country and home. A family that prays together stays together. The man is lonely tonight. He is puzzled and frightened. He stares at the walls. He runs his fingers through his hair. The hammer is beating him, pounding him. The man is lonely, lonely unto death. There was a time when he wasn't lonely. That was long ago, in a September time. You got your trunk packed, Tommy? Yep, all except the shirts, Dad. It's going to be a squeeze. Oh, you've got enough in that trunk to last you straight through high school and college. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Ainsley? Yes. Oh, this is Carberry. I'd like to go over those blueprints with you again. we got some tricky specifications for this job, and I'd like to feel certain that you understand. Carberry, I've studied those blueprints. What's worrying you? Oh, I'm not exactly worrying. You see, it's most important that we... I find... understand perfectly, Carberry. You're the architect. This is your first job. You don't want anything to go wrong, is that it? (laughs) Well, yes, in a way. All right. Now, go to sleep like a good little architect and have pleasant dreams. We have enough neurotic engineers in the world without adding you to the list. And listen. Yes? When Edward Ainsley contracts to do a job for you, Ainsley looks after all the specifications. Well, I have complete trust in you, Ainsley. You understand that. Thanks, Carberry. Good night. Well, there you are, Tommy. Someday I hope you'll do that. Do what, then? What Carberry just did. Someday I hope you'll draw up your own blueprints and worry about them. Architects have a habit of getting into contractors' hair, but uh, I like it. I won't worry about blueprints, Dad. Not if I have you for my contractor. Oh, wouldn't that be something, Tommy? I can see it already. Thomas Ainsley, architect. Edward Ainsley, contractor. (laughs) What'll your first job be, a skyscraper or uh, an auditorium? Oh, just a little house, Dad. Only a little one? A house with a lot of windows and a red tile roof. Go ahead. What else? Well, there'll be a lawn around it with flowers. And I'd like to have it on a hill, Dad. On a small kind of a hill. Tommy, I I hope and pray that you'll do that someday. S- sit down, Tommy. I, over there. I, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, and tomorrow you'll be off to boarding school. You're, you're growing up, Tommy. You don't remember your mother. She was like you, her eyes, her mouth. I can see her in you in so many ways. I told you that your mother died when you were two years old. Yes, she died all right. Poverty killed her. Poverty, neglect, and... Well, you see, Tommy, we weren't always comfortable. There were days long ago when... I didn't know where my next penny was coming from. We lived on hopes, dreams, 
your mother and I. She died of consumption in a public ward, still dreaming of a house on a hill, the kind of house you just talked about. I want to put that kind of house on a hill for her, your mother. It'll be your house, Tommy. You draw the blueprints and I'll take the contract. Maybe someday you, you'll have a wife and kids of your own and all the things we never had, your mother and I. It'll be your house on a hill. You understand, son? Yes, Dad. I don't want you to fail me. I won't. Study hard. Work hard. Whatever you do, remember, I want you to be top man. Thomas Ainsley, first year, algebra 92, French 94, English 93, history 96, head of the class. Oh, I'm proud of you, Tommy. Now go back there this year and do it again. Thomas Ainsley, second year, general average 95, head of the class. What did I tell you, Tommy? Why, you got the stuff in you. Thomas Ainsley, third year. General average, 94. Head of the class. Top man, three years in a row. Now you go back and bring that fourth year medal with you. And when you bring that medal home, son, I'm going to give you a surprise, hear me? A real surprise for Tommy. What are you worrying about, Ainsley? Oh, final exams. <laughs> ah, heck, you'll bowl them over. The headmaster says you're a whiz. Yeah, sure, a whiz. <laughs> of course, the trouble with getting on the honor roll is yeah, it takes too much out of you. Mm. Now, take me. I don't believe in killing myself. hundred years from now, Caesar will still divide, be dividing all Gaul into three equal parts. But where will it get you? Where will you and I be? That trigonometry's got me worried, too. Ah, your father's got you worried. That's your trouble, Ainsley. You've spoiled him. Now, take me. I don't go in for all this honor roll stuff. If I get over 65, my old man goes into ecstasy. There's nothing like hitting a healthy mediocre. And that history exam is going to be plenty tough, too. Yeah, not the way I take a history exam, Ainsley. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, I got a system. When I don't remember the dates, I just have a simple rule. What's that? I look the dates up. That's research, kid. You mean you... Sure. Sure little cribbing now and then, you know? Of course, you gotta be cozy. Well, I figure anybody who's cozy enough to fool some of the eagle eyes they got around this joint deserves a passing mark. You have a half hour left in which to complete your examination, gentlemen. When you have finished, write your name on the top left-hand corner of the... Uh, just a minute. You, sir, Mr. Ainsley. Yes, Mr. Deemer. What's that you're holding in your hand? It's a slip of paper, sir. Bring it up here. I'll take that slip of paper, Ainsley. Hmm. Dates. History dates. You uh, realize what this means, Ainsley? Yes, sir. Well, turn in your examination paper. Report to the headmaster's office. Yes, sir. As headmaster, it pains me to say this, Thomas. You've had a perfect record until this happened. If Mr. Demott had not actually discovered you in this deception, I would not have believed it. Under the circumstances, I have no alternative but to dismiss you. Sorry, Thomas. I understand, sir, but... But my Thomas, father... Thomas, I trust you will tell him the truth, no matter how much it may hurt. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Thomas. Are you in your room, Tommy? Are you home, Tommy? Yes, Dad. Why, this is a surprise. You didn't let me know. I thought graduation was on the 25th. Open the door, son. Tommy, let me look at you. I haven't seen you in months. How are you feeling, and what brought you... Tommy, your door is locked. I don't want to see you now, Dad. Tomorrow morning. What's the trouble? What's up? Please, Dad. Go to bed. It's late. I'll see you in the morning. All right, son. All right.
Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? I can't sleep. Two o'clock in the morning and I, I can't get a wink. T Tommy, are you awake? Open the door, please. You've got me worried, son. I want to talk to you. Do you hear me, Tommy? <laughs> I hear you. You're crying, Tommy. What, what's the matter? Speak. Say something. Don't you trust me? Why, you're... You're my top man, kid. And if there's anything I can do, I'll... Well, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, Tommy. And you don't have to be afraid of me, do you? Do you, Tommy? Did I ever do anything to hurt you? No. No, Dad. You've never hurt me. That's it. Turn the key and come out here, son. Tommy, you're pale, sick. Dad, Pop! All right, son. You made a mistake, a serious mistake. But I forgive you. Remember when you were a kid, learning to say your prayers? The Our Father, remember? You know the part where we ask God to forgive us, just as we forgive other people? Remember when I explained that to you, son? Well, I forgive you. Just as I want you to forgive me if I should ever hurt you. You made a mistake. You admit it. But, Tommy, you're still top man in my books. Another cup of coffee, Tommy? Mm, not enough for me. Feeling better this morning? Much well, better, Dad, thanks. I told you I had a surprise for you. How old are you now? Seventeen. Mm-hmm. Still feel like drawing up those blueprints for that, uh, for that dream house of yours? The one on the hill? Yeah. You really want me to be an architect, Dad? I do. And you're willing to give me another chance. Tommy, I'd be willing to give you a hundred chances if I could bank on the day when you'll come around to me with your own blueprint. <laughs> okay, Dad. I'll do it. That's a promise? Yeah. All right. Go back to work again. I'll pick out a good school for you, the best. And when you come to me with that blueprint, I'll make you a present of the house. Present? Yes. How high can I go in the specifications? <laughs> oh, the sky's the limit. I'm only the contractor. You're the architect. The top man. Well, how are you getting along, Ainsley? Oh, cat kick. And that uh, boy of yours? Tommy? Oh, he's doing all right. Making a fine record in school. Studying to be an architect, eh? That's right. Now, just between the two of us, Ainsley... How is the building line coming along, huh? Well, frankly, not so good, Charlie. Hmm. Scarcity of materials at present. Uh, people aren't building these days. Yeah, I thought so. Did you hear about the Desmond brothers, contractors? What about them? They went out of business. Yeah, it's an old story, Charlie. You know, sometimes I wonder if I won't be folding up myself. You don't mind if I tell you something? Go ahead. Well, just between you and me, I think you're slipping. What do you mean? When did you get your last contract? Oh, uh, maybe a couple of... Yeah, years. yeah, a couple of years ago. Well, but the trade, Charlie, it's this bottleneck. Yeah, and... sure, the trade, scarcity of materials, bottleneck, high prices. That's what they all say. But you're not blind, are you? Why, right now they've got four buildings going up in this town. And who's got the contracts? I'll tell you. It's guys like Spaulding and Richards and a few more... Now, that... wait a minute, well, Charlie. They're smart operators, Ainsley, full of push and drive. They know how to talk. They're all college graduates. And that's the kind of competition that you're running into lately. Uh, all right. So what? I'm not trying to corner the market. Corner the market? Ainsley, you ain't even got a toehold. And if you're honest enough, you'll admit it. Okay, Charlie. You're right. You're not telling me something I didn't know. Sure, I'll admit it. I'm not getting contracts, and it's got me worried. What, uh, where's my next move, Charlie? Well, let me see now. How about getting in on something smart, 
progressive. What, for instance? Stock. Oh, stock. Oh, not me. Now, if you suggested the horses, Charlie, I might listen, but uh, I've never played the market before. Millions have never played the market, Ainsley. And millions are hungry. Here, run your eyes over this sheet. <laughs> it's Greek to me. Look, right here. See that stock? Yeah. Now, this stuff's heading for a boom. Take my word for it. Now, buy in on it now, and you'll sell for double in six months. How much is it worth? As an old security salesman, I might ask at this point, how much have you got? Well, I could scrape up maybe, uh, maybe 11000 ready cash. And you got some life insurance? That's right. Uh, I've also got a trust fund for Tommy. No, skip the trust fund. You don't want to touch that. But if you want my advice, you'll borrow against your house and insurance. Take a loan on my house and, and my insurance? Well, you'll push your auntie up to maybe 20000 Ed. And let me tell you, that's a nice hunk of interest to have in this kind of stock. Well, 20000 on a gamble. Don't use that word, gamble. You remind me of Santa Anita and Belmont. Well, okay, Charlie, cut me in. Ah, uh, now you're talking. I'm doing it for Tommy's sake. A very sweet and paternal instinct. But seriously, I'm hopping on this wagon myself. This stock can't miss. <laughs> Yes? Charlie? Yeah. What's this I hear about that stock? I'm sorry, Edge is going down. It's, uh, well, it's one of those things. But you said that this stock was... Easy, Ainsley. I've been hit just as hard as you have. I'm ruined. The bank is already calling me on those loans I drew against my house and my insurance. I'll lose my home. Got any ready cash? Nothing but Tommy's trust fund. I I can't dig into that. Listen. Yeah? What? Ask the bank for a 30-day extension on that loan. You hear me? I hear you. And after that, what? After that, well, just hang on. Hang on to what? The stock has dropped to less than half of what I bought it for, and it's still going down. Well, what do you want me to do? It was a gamble, Ed. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, a gamble. And it's going to have a funny payoff. I can't understand you, Wensley. Why did you ever want to come out here to the racetrack? There were a lot of things about a lot of people you'll never understand, Charlie. But a racetrack taking a gamble. Listen, I told you I've got to raise 9000 in a week. The bank is calling in my entire loan. But you're not going to raise it on horses. Well, how do you know? When you got me interested in that stock, it was a gamble, wasn't it? Well, sure, but your chance is out here. All right, this is a gamble, too, and I'll take my chances out here. Okay, it's your party. But if I were you, I'd be awfully careful. Uh, at this stage of the game, I, I can't afford to be careful. And don't forget, it's Tommy's money you're juggling. It's his trust fund. I don't need to tell you that you've got obligations. Yeah, yeah, I know it, but with that bugle blowing right now, it's kind of hard to keep track of your obligations. should never have gone to that track yesterday, Ainsley. Talking about it doesn't help. Uh, how much did you lose? Everything. All that I put away for Tommy. Mm. Well, if you want, I'll, uh, I'll let you have a couple thanks, of... Thanks, thanks. I don't want any more debts. I'd like one favor, though. Sure. Sell my stock, uh, whatever's left of it, and pay off that bank loan. Oh, I know, but that'll leave you practically... Yeah, yeah. Practically broke. Hello? Dad, how are you? Okay, Tommy. Did you get the blueprints I mailed? Yes, Tommy, I, I I got the blueprints. How'd you like the sketch of the house? It's beautiful. Beautiful house. All in all, I figured it should run about 10,000. I didn't want to hit you too hard, Dad, even though you said the sky was the limit. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, uh, you better excuse me now. I've, I've got some business to attend to. Okay, Dad. So long. Goodbye, Tommy. It was Tommy, Charlie. Yeah, I know. You're not looking so good, Ainsley. Why don't you close up the office and go home? Take a rest. Good idea. Yeah. I need a rest, Charlie. I need a long rest. I'm tired. You ever get so weary you want to close your eyes and never wake up? Mm. 
And so the man is lonely tonight. He is puzzled and frightened. He stares at the walls. He runs his fingers through his hair. The hammer is beating him, pounding him. The man is lonely. Lonely unto death. Oh, my God. Forgive me. Forgive me. These are the words of a penitent. I didn't know what I was doing. Words of remorse. And Tommy, son, forgive me. For I have loved you, Tommy. Paternal affection. And yet I, I know that you can never forgive me. Words never. of despair. Despair. Despair is the hammer, the deadliest of all the hammers, and already it is beating the flesh and spirit of the man. Money. It's the rotten money I lost, kid. Money I put aside for you. Money, cash, currency. The clinking quarter that buys a loaf of bread and gets change. I wanted you to have security, Tommy. Security. A word, an idea, a state of social well-being. Synonymous with property, a home, something in the bank. It's gone now. Lost. Oh, Tommy, forgive me. I didn't mean... Well, it's all right. It's over. Finished. <laughs> where... Where is somebody? Where is everybody? Oh, it's awful quiet. You get lonesome in a room. I go mad. I'm losing my mind. I can hear it in my mind, thinking, pounding, pounding in the quiet. It keeps pounding. Oh, God, hear me. What am I thinking about? You've got to forgive me. Forgive me. But there's no forgiveness. So I can't help it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it, Tommy. Despair. The deadliest of all the hammers is pounding a pulse of doom in his blood and brain. Is driving him slowly out of his chair across the room. Edward Ainsley lifts the gun from the drawer. Be easier in the dark. I'll put out the light and I'll get used to the dark. Oh. Oh, my God. What am I doing? What am I doing? Dad. Dad. You just turned out the light. You're not asleep yet, are you? Dad. You can't be asleep yet. I, uh... I got a phone call from a friend of yours, Charlie. Are you listening, Dad? He said you were worrying. He told me to come and see you. He said that you tried to make things easy for me and that, well, something about a bad investment. He, he told me you lost everything. You hear me, Dad? Dad, talk to me. Say something, you can hear me. I'm not asleep yet. There's nothing to worry about. I, I didn't want you to, you know, about that dream house. I, I didn't want you to take it too seriously. It was only sort of a game between us, you know that. Nothing to worry about, Dan. What if you did make a mistake? What if you did lose everything? Well, I forgive you, Dan. I forgive you. Hear me? And besides, you got to remember, Dan... Remember what you said to me about asking God to forgive us. Just as we forgive people who offend us, hurt us. But you remember telling me a long time ago, telling me that no matter what we've done... <laughs> do you hear, Dad? You were the one who told me that. So what do you say? Come on out here in the light, I want to see you. Oh, Dad. Everything is okay. Tommy. Tommy, son. It's all right. <laughs> you don't have to say anything. 
Yes, I do. I... I do have to say something. I've... I've learned an awful lot in that room these last few minutes. All my life, Tommy, I've... I've been dealing with sticks and stones, uh, cement, steel, contracts. It, it's my living. That's what I get by on, sure. I, I've always believed in something above and beyond all this, and, but I was really banking on other things, uh, money, security, and when I'd lost them, I, I thought I'd lost everything. You'll never know how lonely how utterly lonely you can be and, until you tried to close the door on God. That's what I learned tonight. Your voice brought it back to me, son. Oh, I, I, I knew it before this, but I, I'd never lived it. I'd been building on sand. Contractor Ed Ainsley, building on sand. Bigger and better blueprints are coming up, Dad. Yeah, yeah. We never get tired trying to build... Even out of the ruins, huh, Tommy? Bigger and better blueprints. Wait and see. That's right. God's blueprints, Tommy. What I almost forgot is that he's the architect. He's boss. He's top man. You have just heard William Gargan as Ainsley in Top Man. Family Theater is presented every week as a tribute to family life in the hope that in your home there will be faith and understanding, yes, and forgiveness, in the hope that all the members of your family will be close together in affection and love. Pray for one another and with one another. Pray together as a family, because a family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Betty Ann Arena for writing tonight's play and to Max Terra for his music. Mel Williamson directed and John Ryder produced the program. Others who appeared on our play tonight were Roland Morris, Frank Gersel, Philip Abbott, Charlie Seal, and Herbert Rawlinson. Next week, our family theater star will be Gene Crane in Little Boy Blue. Your host will be Wallace Ford. This is Dennis Morgan saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Services. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>